Okay, so today is part two of my series for new photographers who just got the Olympus EM10 Mark II. And basically I'm gonna be showing you some settings to help you get started to uh, kind of grow in your photography and to learn to use all of the features in the EM10 Mark II. Okay, now in part one, and if you haven't seen it yet, you know, obviously I recommend you go back and watch that. But to get us off to a quick start for part two, I'm gonna do everything I did in part one in about a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first thing I did in part one was I just did a factory reset like so. And that's something you should know how to do. And then I'm going to format the memory card. Okay, once that's done, we'll go into the uh, custom menu down here into exposure. And we're going to change the noise filter for JPEGs to low. And then we're going to set the auto ISO or auto ISO up to its maximum range is 25,600. And uh, then we're gonna go down here into the picture mode. I'm gonna turn off the info box here, but uh, go into the picture mode and change the second panel here to super fine so you get the maximum JPEG quality. And then we're gonna go into the control panel and we're gonna change the focus point to a center single point focus. And then we're going to go into aperture priority and I'm already there based on the mode dial being on the letter A and also I can confirm that with this letter A down here in the corner. Once we're in aperture priority, we're going to roll the rear dial until we get to the maximum aperture of the lens, meaning wide open. And that's indicated here by the F number at 1.7. And if you're using a kit lens, that'll be F3.5 is probably the lowest number you can go. And that's pretty much it. That's everything I did in part one. Now for part two, we're going to do a couple of more settings and then we're going to start programming the function buttons uh, to some things that I think are more useful for beginning photographers. Okay, so the first setting I want to change is for the live view, okay, and it's to help you compose your pictures a little better. Okay, so let's go into the menu and go here to the display menu and we're going to choose display grid and you'll see multiple grids here i use this one the most but if you're just starting out i would use this one this is your basic uh rule of thirds grids and what it's doing is drawing two lines you know vertically and two lines horizontally and effectively breaking your screen or your view into um thirds vertically and horizontally okay and, you know, a common rule for, a, you know, a rule of thirds photography is basically put your subject in one third of the frame and put the rest of the frame in the other two thirds. Um, if you're doing landscapes, you might see, uh, you know, one third of the frame will be, say, a lake. The other third will be sort of the mountain range. And then the top third will be sort of the skies and clouds and everything. So um, I think uh, James Popsis, he just put a video out talking about how to improve your pictures. And he... He gives a lot of examples of his own photography and breaking things up into thirds. So I'll put a link down to his video below. But, uh, you know, rule of thirds, there's thousands of hours of video on that online. Okay, to help you with your composition. But I just want to show you how to set it in the camera uh, so that you can use the rule of thirds in your photography. Now, the next setting we're going to change. And this is... Uh, was a suggestion by one of the viewers from part one and I believe it was Joan uh, so thank you Joan for this suggestion but uh, she found that she was following along and the camera would go to sleep on her uh, and then she'd have to kind of go back and start over so uh, let's set the camera so it doesn't just go to sleep or turn off while we're going through this tutorial and that's in the same menu the display menu but we have to go down to about the third page right here sleep and we'll turn this off Okay, and then I'm going to do one more thing, or two more things actually, that you don't need to do. But I'm going to turn the display brightness down to about a minus 5, so it's easier to see on the uh, screen. And then I'm going to change the electronic viewfinder, not the auto switch. So that when I put my finger in front of the uh, viewfinder, it doesn't uh, turn the screen off. And actually... Uh, turning the EVF auto switch off I use a lot uh, for the most part because I don't like the viewfinder switching back and forth on me uh, so I like to have control over that as well so uh, maybe, maybe I'm kind of a control freak but you know that's that's what photography is is controlling the camera right and that's how you're gonna learn 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about some of the buttons on the camera now. Okay, the first button I want you to kind of become more familiar with is the info button. And we touched on it in part one in the menu. So if I go into the menu, uh, if I want to know what this line item is for, I can click the info button and a little pop-up comes up and kind of gives me a description. As I said, some descriptions are better than others, but uh, it's, it's helpful nonetheless. Okay, I'm going to turn it off for this tutorial, but, you know, I recommend you leave that on. But when you're in live view, the info button does kind of the same thing, but it toggles through different things, okay? And the default settings are pretty good, I think. We don't need to change anything, but let me show you what they are. Okay, right now we're in the default live view screen. If I click the info button, it turns everything off so that you can see the full frame without any distracting icons and information. Uh, again, to help you compose, you know, and it's also easier to see the grid lines on the back of the camera. Okay, and then uh, if I click the info button again, okay, you'll notice the uh, exposure information comes back, but also a histogram. Okay, and the histogram, I want you to think about sort of like the uh, a weather forecast, right? They talk about barometer, they talk about the highs and the lows, and maybe wind chill. I mean, there's all kinds of information, but, you know, if I'm watching the weather report in Chinese, it's not going to mean anything to me. And I think as a beginning photographer, really, this histogram doesn't mean anything. And if I want to know what the weather's like, I can just look out the window, right? <laughs> I don't need all of that information anyway. And uh, with Live View, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you don't need to worry about the histogram at this point. If you want to know what the picture's going to look at, just, just look at the back of your screen, okay? I think that's good enough for now if, if you're just starting out, okay? Now, later on, we'll go into the histogram and, and some of the uses for that. But, uh, you know, for, for if you're just starting out, it's not that big a deal, okay? So let's click the info button again and see what we get. Now this is actually very useful, these level meters, okay? You'll see it down here at the bottom with a few bars and over here on the right. <clears throat> so what they're talking about is basically the bottom level is for your angle, okay? Or roll of your camera. And then the one on the right, okay, is for your vertical or your pitch, okay? and the horizontal one for your angle or roll is, is really the most useful for, you know, like when you're holding the camera over your head or you're kind of down low and you need to look, okay? It, it helps you level the camera, okay? And that's when I find I use the, the horizontal one the most. And the pitch, in combination with the, the roll, okay, angle, I use that a lot in my real estate photography to, you know, uh, reduce the amount of distortion I get, particularly with very wide angle lenses. So as you grow in your photography and, and have different lenses and, and different uh, jobs or different types of photos, you know, the level meters are very, very helpful to help you get a better picture. So this is the mode I like to leave it in, uh, in terms of the live view, is to have the level meters always showing, okay? Uh, and, and I think uh, down the road it'll help you a lot in, in all of your photography because there's some people, you know, you take a landscape photo and, it, and if the horizon's off just one degree, it's like, man, thumbs down, just like that, you know, it's like, I'm not that critical, but, you know, uh, again, you know, having a level horizon is very important in photography, I, in, in my opinion, but, you know, creative things aside, you know, uh, having a level picture uh, really you know, it's leaps and bounds better than one that's not. Okay, now, uh, if I click the info button again, you'll see it just goes back to the original screen. So there's uh, three or four screens there, but again, I like to use this one the most. So let's go ahead and level the meter. And when it's level, it'll turn green, just like so. And it's not super precise, but it's fairly accurate, okay? So I'm going to go, okay, that's good enough. All right. Now, um, let's talk about the function buttons, okay? The function buttons, and this is one of the best features of this camera, is you can customize it to your heart's content. And it comes with three dedicated function buttons, um, which is awesome. But unfortunately, I think the default settings for these function buttons are really useless for a beginning photographer, the way they're set now. So uh, what are the function buttons for? What are the default settings now? Let's, let's, and you can just go into the menu and look. You just click the uh, info or menu button, 
and you go back out and let's go up to looks like uh, the B menu B for button and click in there and the first line item there is button function so we click OK and it tells you what all of the functions and buttons that you can reprogram but the first three the three buttons on the back top and two on the top of the camera okay the first function button is programmed to AEL AFL okay um, the second button function two is programmed to multifunction and then the third one function three is set to live guide okay so let's see how these work just by default okay very quickly now right now the function one button is set to AEL not AEL and AFL okay only AEL because if I click it or I push the function button you'll notice a little AEL green light come on or icon and it tells you that the exposure is now locked okay so what does that mean well if I turn it off you know when I put my hand in front of the lens you can see the shutter speed change the ISO change so the exposure is changing trying to adjust to get the correct exposure but let's say the exposure settings as they are now which is ISO 200 uh, 1 one hundredth of a second f1.7 I want to keep that exposure for the picture I can click that now you see when I put my hand in front all the exposure settings don't change okay and that's all that does but as a beginning photographer and the default settings on the camera this is a little bit redundant okay because when you half press the shutter button that actually does auto exposure lock and autofocus lock okay not only auto exposure so for example and let me change the focus uh, touch screen I focus on her here I can half press the shutter button now it's locked focus and it's locked the exposure because if I put my hand in front of the lens you can see the exposure has not changed okay and then I can let go and if I put my hand in front you see the exposure changing I, if I take a if I half press the shutter button here and it's having trouble locking let me let me do it this way and let go you can see how bright that is even though I take my hand away and then I can take the picture and it'll give me the image that I asked for with that exposure so we're going to reprogram this function one button to something I think is a little more useful as a beginner and not redundant okay now for function two button if you just push it and let me click the OK button to turn off the uh, focus point for the function 2 button if I click it you'll see what they call the highlight shadow menu or uh, controls and you can rotate the rear dial to bring the shadows up if you look down here at the rocks they're a little brighter now they're a little darker and this is this is a creative feature of the camera that I use time to time for and more for black and whites but as a beginning photographer this you know I don't recommend going into this quite yet okay <clears throat> but what do they mean by multifunction I mean that's really only one function right highlights and shadows it's not very intuitive but I'll show you how to you change the function of the function 2 button as it's uh, set to by default what you do is you hold the function 2 button down and then you roll the rear dial and then you see a sub menu come up to let you change what this function 2 button is for so a common one is magnify right so I set it to magnify and if I click the function 2 button it draws a little box this is not the focus point this is actually going to become the uh, uh, point that it's going to magnify on actually it's both the focus point and the magnify button so I can focus here but I can also push the function button again and it'll magnify on to the point that I focus so it's helpful in that if you want to make sure you acquired focus properly but um, excuse me as a beginning photographer I, I don't think it's that helpful overall okay so we're gonna reprogram the function 2 button from its default multifunction okay then the function 3 button really is the least useful of the three in my opinion okay the function 3 button when I push it brings up the live guide and this is I think the intent was for very very new photographers to help them change the saturation change the white balance change the exposure compensation okay so looking at it here saturation it says change color 
image this is actually I believe the white balance uh, this is exposure comp this is supposed to control your aperture uh, this is uh, supposed to control your shutter speed okay by slowing and speeding the shutter you get like blur effects which we're trying to avoid really and then lastly is this shooting tips and actually this is the only useful thing on the function 3 button okay and what this does is it gives you composition tips and shooting tips for taking different kinds of pictures so if we click OK here it'll actually give you instructions okay and I'll try and read this uh, talk to a child and take a picture from their eye level okay that's a solid photography tip okay and if we click down again take many pictures by continuous shooting okay and I'll get into different shutter modes in another video but this is also a solid tip you know shoot in high-speed shutter take multiple pictures okay because you never know what you're going to capture a certain expression or a certain motion and then they get in animal photos food photos flowers all kinds of things so you know I think um, and look there's a rule of thirds right kind of I think these are actually actually pretty helpful and good tips so go through those if you're not already familiar with these techniques but I'm gonna go through it one more time and I want you to look at the pictures this time not the uh, text okay and I want you to look for a common theme in all these pictures because we're gonna come back to that a little bit later do you, do you see the common theme yet okay I'll come back to that and tell you what the common theme is of all those pictures okay so for now let's let's start customizing this camera for the beginning photographer okay and we'll do that by changing function button number one which is this one right here and we do that in the same button menu that we were in looking at them and you'll see a little right arrow here which means I can click over to the right and then by pushing up and down on this d-pad I can select what I want the function one button to do and you can see it's at the default AEL AFL or you can just turn it off but we're going to change this to HDR okay and let me talk about HDR for a second basically HDR is you know high dynamic range photography and the idea is to uh, sort of balance the exposure in a, in a picture and the way it does that is by taking four pictures okay at different exposures then blending them together for you in camera to give you a final image that's a little bit more balanced so things aren't too dark you know it brings up the shadows and things aren't too bright so that the sky's not blown out you might actually see some colors and textures and clouds so in theory the way they've built it into the camera it's very good okay but it does have a couple limitations and I don't recommend using it for the intent that they have here okay as a beginning photographer because um, what the, what are the limitations one is it locks the ISO at 200 okay the other limitation is is it turns off the image stabilization okay and these are the two things you need okay to take photography or pictures in low light <laughs> and HDR function takes that away so in my opinion uh, you really can't do HDR in low light unless you're on a tripod or a very steady surface okay the camera cannot move at all if you're doing HDR in in low light so it's not it's not very useful uh, if you're just walking around handheld you know on vacation whatever and not and no tripod now it is very good for landscapes and good light okay and actually I think the pictures come out a little bit sharper too than just taking a single picture um, so we'll, we'll, I'll do an example with my little scene here but uh, if you're in good light try the HDR but the reason I want you to start shooting with HDR is uh, you know with the built-in camera function is I want you to start to get a feel for different exposures okay and then blending them to, together for now we're just going to let the camera do all the work but when it's taking the pictures you'll see the individual exposures of the four pictures it takes very quickly and then how, what the final result is blended together so once you start to get a feel for uh, multiple exposures and and what they look like blended 
you're going to be able to take control of the camera and control that yourself to get the effect that you want, okay? So just use HDR sparingly, but with the intent to learn uh, in the long down the road, bracketing, blending, multiple exposures, and doing your own quote-unquote HDR shots. Okay, it's something I use a lot, okay, especially in my real estate work. Okay, but not the way it's designed by default in the camera, but because I know how to control the camera and do my own kind of uh, photo merging and blending. Okay, but let's go ahead and do one sample shot here just so you get a feel for it. If I click the function button, you'll notice that the HDR uh, icon pops up telling me the camera is now in HDR mode. And if I don't want to be in HDR mode, I can turn it off like that. Okay, but let's put it in function one and then watch over here. Okay. We're now, we're now in HDR mode and it's kind of taken away the ISO uh, reading because it's locked at ISO 200 anyway. And then uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll focus over here and we'll push the shutter button and we just have to push it once. And you can see it took four pictures uh, at once very quickly. And then let's look at the final result. Okay. And if you look closely, you can see that there's the shadows aren't quite as harsh in the, in the uh, shadow areas and then that the background, the sky, um, is a little bit softer. So looking at this, this is a normal picture versus the previous one, HDR. So you can see it, it blended different exposures together to try to give you a more neutral overall exposure. And like I said, it's very useful in landscape photography in good light. In low light, you have to be on a tripod. But again, just use it as a uh, you know way to get a feel for doing multiple exposures, exposure compensation, and bracketing. Okay. Now, function two button, like I said, is is pretty much um, not really appropriate for a beginning photographer. So we're going to change that to the digital teleconverter. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go into the menu. We're still in the button function menu. Click OK here, and then we will roll through this until we see digital teleconverter. There it is. And click OK here. Okay, so you see a little magnifying glass with the X2, meaning it's going to multiply the image by two times zoom so that you get an effective, uh, like in my case, I have a 25 millimeter lens. It now is effectively a 50 millimeter lens. And this is another feature that, you know, it's the intent is to try to get you closer to the subject. Uh, give you that telephoto effect without having to put telephoto lens on. And the way it works is it takes the regular 16 megapixel picture, you know, the full 25 millimeter length, then it crops in digitally so it acts like a 50 millimeter and gives you a 2x zoom. And then it reinterpolates that back to 16 megapixels, okay, in your final JPEG image. So this does not work for raw images. And there's an argument that, you know, just, just take the lens without the digital, or take the picture without the fifth, uh, digital teleconverter and then crop in yourself in post. Okay, and that's, that's also legitimate, but that's if your intent is to zoom in, okay, and try to get closer, okay? My intent here for you as a beginning photographer is to help you with your compositions, okay? Because remember when we were in the function three button and I said this is the most useful thing and... There was all these uh, shooting tips in there. The common theme in all those pictures, okay? And look, if you haven't figured it out yet, let's go back there. Look at the common theme. Right? The common theme is fill the frame with your subject, okay? Basically, you know, getting closer in to your subject or filling the frame with your subject is really a very, very basic compositional technique that I think, in my opinion, trumps rule of thirds, golden ratio, whatever else they got out there. If you fill the frame with your subject, your pictures are going to be more interesting, okay? Because you know what the subject is, the person looking at the picture knows what the subject is, and if the subject is interesting, then it'll be a better picture, okay? So, let's take this uh, scene I have set up here, okay? and uh, turn on the digital teleconverter. Okay, so we just click the function two button 
And then all I have to do is recompose a little bit. Maybe like so. Let's focus on her face and click OK and take a picture there. Now, look at that image. That's more interesting than the previous one in my opinion, right? Because now it's clear the subject is the person and you can still see where they're at. Let's compare that to the previous one. I mean, this one's not bad if you want to get the whole scene in. But you should work the scene and crop in, okay, digitally, and get this picture, okay? So now you can practice taking pictures both wide and a little bit narrow, okay, to improve your compositions and see which ones you kind of prefer. You know, I'm not telling you what kind of style of photography you should be doing, but I think um, programming this to be the digital teleconverter helps you practice different ways of taking the same scene, okay? So, um, that's, you know, that's what I recommend doing as a beginning photographer is fill the frame with your subject best you can. Okay, and I think I'm using two things here. I'm still kind of rule of thirds, and I'm also filling the frame with the, the subject even more, and, you know, I think it makes for a better picture. Okay, now, the function three button, okay, we're not going to program it to do anything. We're going to program it to save everything we've done up to this point, okay? So that, you know, when you're out taking pictures and trying different things, and I encourage you, you know, try changing the aperture, try changing, you know, different color profiles, natural, vivid, try some of the art filters. You know, go out there and have fun with your camera, okay? I'm not trying to restrict you in any way. But if you want to go back to all the settings we talked about, because... This is what happens, okay? And I'm going to just use a very simple example. But you know, you're shooting black and white, and then maybe you're shooting in continuous shutter, high speed, and uh, you're playing with the uh, white balance, you're trying something like tungsten. And now you can't remember how to get back, okay? Because you want to go back, says, oh, that was fun, but how do we get back to what, you know, Rob was talking about? Well, this is easy to do, okay? So, let me uh, let me put those things back to where they were. We are on natural, and this was on just a uh, standard mechanical shutter, okay? And let's turn off the digital teleconverter, okay? Let's save everything to the function three, all right? So all we have to do. Go back into the button function, go down here, just like we did for the other ones. And uh, you may have seen it before, but there's a my set one. Okay, so now the function three button is set to load everything that was in the my set one settings, okay? So the first thing we need to do now is go ahead and load up the my set settings with what the camera is set at right now. So you just go back into the menu, go all the way here to the left column, go up to shooting menu number one, come over here to reset my set, click OK, scroll down, but don't click OK yet. First thing you want to do is click to the right, and now you want to click OK to save all of the settings that are in the camera as of right now. So we'll click OK. If you click OK here, it's actually going to load the settings that are in my set one, okay? And that's not what we want because we haven't saved anything to it yet. Um, so by clicking to the right, you can set it. All the settings are in the camera as they are now. You can also reset if you click the up button, but don't do that, okay? We'll click set, and we're good. So now the function three button will um, bring everything back to what we had set before. So with the same scenario, let's say I was in monochrome and I changed the white balance to something like that and let's say I was shooting an ISO 200 for some reason sorry I don't have my glasses on again and I turned you know SIS and I changed the shutter speed to high speed silent 
So I've been messing around and shooting and just having fun with the camera. But I want to get back to all the settings we just talked about, right? That we went through all the trouble of setting up. All we have to do is hit the function 3 button like so. And now let's look at the super control panel. You can see the white balance back to auto. We're back to the natural color profile. We're back to a single shot mechanical shutter. Even the uh, uh, image stabilization is set back to auto. So this is a very quick way to get everything back to uh, the settings that we had before. Now if I want to go back to the ones I just had, actually, I can click the function 3 button again and it now becomes a toggle between the settings saved in my set 1 and the previous settings that we had in the camera because you can see we're back to like this fluorescent, white balance, monochrome, etc. But let's toggle back. So it's another way for you to kind of experiment with the camera by trying two different settings at the same time. Uh, with different shots and um, you know again this is something I use all the time in pro my professional work and it's something you should really get proficient at okay with this camera is programming these function buttons to do things that you want so your first homework assignment okay <laughs> if you want to call it that is remember when I started this video I changed the image brightness of the display and I turned the sleep mode off because it was originally set to one minute so what I want you to do so you can get some practice is turn the sleep mode back to one minute and turn the uh, screen brightness back to uh, zero because I think I have it at like minus five now and then save those settings to the my set okay and uh, just practice just changing a couple of things just start with that okay but uh, that's pretty much what I want to show you for part two okay I know this was a little bit longer didn't mean it for it be this long but uh, you know, the, these are settings I think that uh, will build another foundation for our next level when we start working in part three with exposure compensation, okay? And adjusting the exposure, which will lead into us actually adjusting the aperture now instead of always shooting wide open. Um, so we're going to go with that. And if you have any other suggestions or would like to see something in the next video, just let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate the great feedback and questions I got from uh, the previous part one video. So uh, I'm a little inspired now to keep making these for you. Uh, we'll go into part three with exposure compensation. Okay, so hit subscribe if you'd like to see that. And hopefully we'll see you again soon.